Nearly six years ago, the European Space Agency surprised its longtime spaceflight partners at NASA, as well as diplomatic officials at the White House, with an announcement that some of its astronauts were training alongside Chinese astronauts. The goal was to send European astronauts to China's Tiangong Space Station by 2022. We were welcomed as colleagues and friends by the Takanauts and the instructor, said European astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti at the time. Language and cultural differences are obviously a challenge, but also adds value as we're all focused on the common goal of space exploration. European astronauts did not fly to the Chinese space station in 2022, however, even though China completed its construction before the end of the year. In fact, Europeans are now unlikely ever to do so, as the Tiangong facility flies for another decade or longer in low Earth orbit. During his annual press briefing in late January, Joseph Achbacher, Director General of the European Space Agency, said his focus remains on the International Space Station partnership with NASA, Russia, Canada, and Japan. For the moment, we have neither the budgetary nor the political or let's say green light or intention to engage in a second space station that is participating on the Chinese space station, is what Oshbacher said. Well, what makes their attitude change? And how is Elon Musk's SpaceX related to this? Let's talk about it today, right here on Alpha Tech. In 2017, the Americans really were blindsided by Europe's announcement of the Chinese partnership. It came as the U.S. was trying to determine its own path forward regarding the space station's lifetime and follow-on projects. At the time, the notion that the station should fly until 2028 or even 2030 was not a universal one among U.S. policymakers. The Trump administration muddied those waters with the 2018 budget proposal to end the ISS in 2026 in order to free up funding for what would become the Artemis Moon Program. That effort was quickly beaten back by the U.S. Congress, but European officials couldn't help but wonder where their astronauts would go in the latter half of the 2020s if the ISS was gone. Some European officials, too, were uncomfortable with the Trump administration's talk of militarizing space. For example, in mid-2018, a key European space official, then Aryan Group Chair Elaine Charmeau, talked of how the continent must resist U.S. efforts of space dominance. Europe is not going to say, I want to dominate the space world, Charmeau said. Europe is looking for other things. Europe wants access to space. Europe wants to have their own infrastructure in space with Galileo and Copernicus. We seek cooperation. At the time, this cooperation included working with China on an array of space initiatives, including astronaut training. And from a political standpoint, ESA officials knew this was unwelcomed by NASA counterparts. However, it did afford them a measure of leverage with the U.S. Space Agency. However, now the European Space Agency is aligned with NASA and the West. But why? According to multiple sources, Oxbacher accurately characterized the budget situation. ESA's funding is less than one-third of NASA's. During its most recent budget cycle, although the Space Agency received an increase from member nations, it didn't receive nearly all the money it asked for. There is accordingly no funding to barter with China for access to Tiangong. Besides, the more significant reason is probably a political one. In the last few years, geopolitics and space policy have changed. Initially, almost everyone involved in space policy harbored doubts about the stability of the Trump administration's Artemis program to return to the moon. However, Artemis has since crystallized into a real and well-funded program. In November, when the Artemis I mission launched from Florida, European space officials proudly watched as Orion's European-made service module propel the vehicle out to the moon and back to Earth. Generally, European space officials like the Artemis program are seeking areas for greater involvement. This is drawing them closer to NASA. Then came Russia's invasion of Ukraine about a year ago. And this has badly shaken the continent, and Russia's war against Ukraine has strengthened ties between Europe and the U.S. across several fronts, including space. Conversely, the war has driven China and Russia closer in some respects. Over the last 18 months, China and Russia have been drawing up plans for an international lunar research station. They intend to establish a base of operations at the lunar South Pole, and this is correctly viewed as a Chinese-Russian alternative 
to the Artemis program. Europe has been watching, and China's passive support of Russia amid this aggression has pushed its capitals to revisit their partnerships with China. For spaceflight, this has fortified Europe's view that it has a more stable future working with NASA and other like-minded partners in low Earth orbit as well as deep space. For this reason, publicly stepping back from plans to send European astronauts to China's space station at this time makes sense. More importantly, Europe depends more on SpaceX rockets. Were it not for the existence of two extraordinarily successful NASA programs and SpaceX in particular, Russia's response, which today reads like a child's tantrum, could easily have been a grave threat with far-reaching consequences. Last year, in response to sanctions after its unprovoked invasion, Russia announced it was withdrawing support from Europe's French Guinea Soyuz launch operation, effectively killing Arian Space's Soyuz offering and potentially delaying several upcoming European launches indefinitely. This put a strain on pending ESA rocket launches, as the space agency has been relying on Soyuz rockets for medium lift launches. ESA had planned to launch an Earth science mission dubbed Earth Care on a Soyuz in September 2023, as well as the Euclid Infrared Space Telescope. This was a wake-up call that we've been too dependent on Russia, says ESA's Oxbacher Tow Reuters last year. Indeed, earlier this year, OneWeb confirmed the successful deployment of 40 satellites launched by SpaceX. Neil Masterson, the CEO of OneWeb, commented, Today's launch is a thrilling way to start 2023, and at OneWeb, this launch brings us even closer to completing our constellation and launching connectivity services around the world. Furthermore, it's not hard to imagine that U.S. and European responses to Russia's aggression would have been weakened if NASA and ESA astronauts were still entirely dependent upon Russia to access the International Space Station. Further, in the same scenario, given its withdrawal from French Guinea, it's also not implausible to imagine that Russia might have severely hampered or even fully withdrawn its support of Western access to the ISS. Put simply, Crew Dragon, now a bastion of independent European and U.S. human spaceflight in an age of extraordinary Russian recklessness, has arguably never been more important and SpaceX successes have never been more of a triumph than they are today. All in all, Osbacher and Europe's space officials still want some autonomy from the U.S. on matters like space launch, of course, but they understand that to realize larger programs of human spaceflight, they've got to pick a side. And now, they have. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.